last week, Renee King took part of the coaching race. Our interstaters moved in together. Aaron Sweet tackled his marital problems. You decided on a club song. And we saw Adam and Rachel's last hurrah as singles. Tonight, the club has its first wedding. Our coaches picked the Hammerhead team for round one. We check in on the interstaters and Aaron's marital situation. An injuries crisis rocks the Hammerheads and you decide who will coach the club. big 90 minute special of the club, your club, the Mighty Hammerheads. <laughs> who, tonight, who tonight finally make their debut this Saturday at Holland Park in round one. It's going to be great. And it's been a busy week down at the club. Tonight, you choose the coach. Who's it going to be? David Reese jones Jenny Ball, or could it be Daniel Southern? It's your call. There we go. Also tonight, we reveal the team jumper and go inside the match committee meeting to choose the team for Saturday's blockbuster against North Sunshine at Holland Park. And there's even a wedding as Adam and Rachel finally go down the aisle. Yes. And there's some shock new revelations on the women in footy issue. Will Debbie Lee and Jamie be able to play for the Hammerheads this weekend? We'll find out. Mixed views there. We'll find out later on. But first tonight, the widely reported injury crisis that threatens to derail the Hammerheads' round one hopes. The Hammerheads have been training and playing their pre-season games hard, and it's beginning to hurt. On the eve of their inaugural round one game this Saturday, ten players are in doubt through injury. Oh, I hit someone's back of their boot when I went to tackle them. What's up with where well, your muscle turns into your... Yeah, there, Dad. Okay. But it's a good tear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six weeks. Yeah, that's easy. There have been a lot of soft tissue injuries, twists and strains that are keeping players out of the game. And it's going to be anywhere from two to sort of four to six weeks, something like that, before it settles down and is strong enough to be out there and playing on. But it's not long before more serious injuries begin to happen. You've torn your cartilage yeah. on the inside here, yeah. and um, then more than likely you'll yeah. need an arthroscopy. Fitzy's the first to go under the knife. Yeah. That's his kneecap there. Let a K1 from the first and then a stitch. Other injuries are treated there and then. Frankenstein. <laughs> But the hard pre-season and the growing list of injuries makes it difficult selecting a team. Certainly does make it difficult to select a team. A long list of hammerheads on the injury list there. And none more devastating for the team than a serious injury last weekend to the biggest name on the hammerheads list. More about that later on. But our greatest hard luck story, in all honesty, involves one of the players who still hasn't even made it to training. Joel Payton seemed like a quiet guy when he first got the call up for the Hammerheads. Yes, you're in. Yes. Yeah. There's another side to him when he's at home. Hello, it's that time in the morning that you love. Well, you're late, mate. You're late for work. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> As legal guardian to his younger siblings, the early morning wake up call is routine for 23 year old Joel. Oh, that's a parental situation there where um, both parents actually split up a long time ago. Unfortunately, they both got married again. So they've got their new families now, doing the big brother part, my uh, little brother and sister. We've never really had like a close-knit like family before. So Nathan, Ebony and I, we've always been like pretty good mates. When Joel leaves the kitchen of his Kilmore home, it's cattle, not kids that keep him occupied. Come on, get up. 
going to driving actually uh, some time back, looking for a bit of work. I uh, sort of just fell into the job. Someone needs some cattle moved. We do that one again. His reputation earning him praise from farmers. There's not a lot of guys left who still drove, and honestly, Joel, he's the worst. He's the one and only, the one you can always count on. He rocks. <laughs> Did you get all that? I'm not getting back on this beast. I don't care if you think I'm a pussy or what the hell do you think I am. I reckon I'm bloody smart. <laughs> well, just take another look at your exquisite driving skills again, Joel. Really, I just don't know what happened. The, the horse went a little bit nuts. And uh, come a cropper. But that's all right, you know, get back up. <laughs> Poor old Joel. A broken arm for poor old Joel, and that's unfortunately going to keep him out for some time. Well, it's Thursday night, selection night for coaches all around the country. It's also selection night for you as you choose a coach. Our coaches are with us. Please welcome Jenny, Daniel and David. Yeah. Now have, a look. have a look at the nerves of these three, would you? Have a look at that, like mice at the moment. How are you feeling? Yeah, a little bit nervous, Craig. It's a big night for us all. It's uh, been a big week, actually, all around. You didn't sleep last week, Jenny. Oh, hey. again. I know it's pathetic, but I didn't. No. And Dan, Dan and myself didn't sleep last night. We were up all night voting for ourselves. <laughs> oh, damn. I wasted all that time in bed. I could have been doing the same. It's going to be a hot vote. Who does everyone think will be the coach? Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> Some nervous coaches there, we'll get back to them in a moment, but one bloke who will sit in on all team selections of the Hammerheads is the former Kangaroos boss in the AFL and now our football manager, Greg Miller, who joined the coaches this week to decide our historic first team. Let's take you inside their match committee meeting earlier tonight and take a look at the full back line. OK, well, um, let's, let's get moving and start with the back line. Where do we start? Back pocket, Swanee. He's Swan played down there a fair bit. He's pretty Swan strong Swan overhead. Quite reliable. Look, I think Richard's the obvious choice for fullback. Yeah, he was great he's, in the um, practice match. And, and he's got to concentrate. I mean, the thing is, if you play him a fullback, he's not going to like having goals kicked on him. So. But he, and, he, and he does. It's going to push I mean, him. He, he played in the practice match and he was fantastic. Yep. He played against a pretty good player and he's got a, a, a really good kick out. All right. The back pocket. Back pocket. What do you think we go there? I think we we play there a little bit. I think at this stage, you know, with his injury and that too, it, it might be just a, a better to ease him in out of a back pocket and you can just tag someone down there and, and put their rovers out of business. <laughs> Little liver there, and that's the Hammerheads full back line. Got a feeling we're going to be needing the full back line this weekend. Yeah, very important, Craig. There, uh, we start all our attack from defence, so I think Richo will lead the boys down there. He's pretty experienced. What about Richo? He's known for a beer before a game, as you were in your day, David. Daniel, you don't drink. No, What's I'm it? a non-drinker, Craig. What right. advice would you give to Richo from now on until the game starts? Well, it's up to each individual to see what gets them right for the game. And uh, if Richo normally has a couple on a Friday night, well, good and well, as long as not a couple of dozen. Just in, just in moderation, Dan. That's, I think right. that's the way. Okay, well, it's been a double whammy for one of the Hammerhead boys who was well of hoping to get selected in the team is also getting married and that's still to come right here tonight on the club but as we saw Richo will be settling in at full back on Saturday and he's been settling into a new home this week also Richo's lease is up on his home in Yarra Glen so he's taking the opportunity to look for new digs in town somewhere closer to the Hammerheads home ground and you couldn't get somewhere more suited to Richo than the club pub G'day. Murph, is it? Yeah, yeah. Richo. How are you, Richo? Pleased to meet you, Murph. Pleased to meet you. Mate, I'm down here um, trying to swindle a bit of a room. Yeah, yeah. I'm out from Yarra Glen. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in this new club, and we've just oh, got yeah, the uh, yeah. Kensington ground down the road here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Island Park. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm keen on saving my licence, mate, so oh, yeah. I need a bit of a room down here for oh, four or five months while we... Uh, yeah. I think we'll be able to look after you. Beautiful, mate. Yeah. 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 There we go. This is it, Murph. There we go. This is it. This is it. Nice and cosy. Nice and cosy, that's the yeah. word for it, yeah. cosy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't drink Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but Thursdays and Sunday I like having a bit of a sip, so I'm looking forward to it actually wandering down the steps on a Sunday with a hangover and a bit sore from footy. I drive every day all over town for work, so it's important that I keep my licence. So, um, yeah, hopefully it all works out, and uh, whether it's for five, six months, you never know, I could be stuck here and still be here in 20 years. <laughs> First time, two orphans bonded for life. Promise me you'll protect him. 
Come on, we're going after him. Now he's a legend that everyone wants. Poaching's illegal. It's going to be impossible trying to protect him here. That ape is the best fundraising tool this conservancy has ever had. If he stays in here, he'll die. How much do you think he's worth? Charlize Theron and Bill Paxton. You've got goo eyes for the gorilla girl. Is love enough to save Mighty Joe Young? Oh, shoot! Premier Sunday. AOL's great for kids and parents. Homework helps a lifesaver. We each get our own email address and password. I chat with famous people all the time. And with Instant Messenger, I can see when the other mums are online. And it's easy to get help if I need it. Join the 34 million people experiencing the AOL difference. If only everything was that easy. Cash in now on our Coles Super Late Week Special. Check out Loose Gala Apples, great value at only $1.29 a kilo. But only available from today until Sunday. So be quick. For years, the paint industry has been trying to nail a problem. To come up with a washable flat finish that won't show shiny spots. Guess what? Problem solved. New Solver Maxi Wash Washable Flat. It's as flat as a tack. When trouble finds you, I'll see you through, I'll see you through, oh yes I will. When trouble finds you, I'll see you through, I'll see you through, oh yes I will, oh yes I will. Want a better night's sleep? Then hurry into Bedshed's Better Bedroom Sale. Save $500 off this Beautyrest non-flip Queen Ensemble. Save $100 off this Back Care Queen Ensemble. And this Miracle Queen Ensemble is just $17.99. Bedshed! I love my day, Ulana. Let's go power steering, air conditioning. Limited edition Daewoo Lanos, now with $2,000 worth of extras. Now there's even more to like in a Daewoo Lanos. How do you like it? We start with the centre half back. How do you think Aaron would go at centre half back? He's well, he's fit enough. Yeah, he's, he's high he's and he's strong, and, and, and he, he can be disciplined. So he, he, you mm. know, you can just have him there just to mark their play. Half back, Jen on the flank. Who do you think? So yeah. maybe if we put Andy there, then put Andy back there. He's played a fair bit on the back line. Another half back okay. flank. Look, um, Marshy. Marshy, he played yeah. there last week and was pretty good. He goes right too, Marshy. He's got good skills and, and could pro pace. provide a bit of run across the half back. Yeah. As long as he's got over his bucks night and his oh. wedding and everything. But uh, He's got a lovely support of what? Isn't that nice? <laughs> Back line. Good to see some family value sneak into the team selection. <laughs> and good news also there for Marshy, who slots in on the half-back flank. It's been a pretty big week for the young bloke from Cranbourne. Not only is he making his footy debut on Saturday on national television, he's also got married. You're in. Yeah. You're out. We first met Adam and Rachel when she missed out on making the Hammerhead I squad. Well, I thought you would have made it. They're engaged to be married. <laughs> Your idea. Last week they farewelled their single days. George reckons Bob's funny. Wait now, we're not waiting. We're not waiting anymore. For Rachel, the night ended on a sour note. Yep. The wedding day's yeah. arrived, and everything seems to be running like clockwork. Um, okay. yeah, it was more off at six. We went down to get our hair done, and then we got our makeup. We're all ready to go. But the ceremony's not until 3.30 in the afternoon. Where's that shirt? And Adam seems less organised than his bride. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So here. Okay, I've given Adam a few jobs to do this morning, taking the cake over, the music over, some name tags and things like that, so let's just hope he's got them done. <laughs> oh, you are. At least he's found the shirts. Just look at your flowers, like, um... And while Rach is enjoying a photographic session in the front yard of her parents' home, Adam and his groomsmen <coughs> still aren't dressed. It's for real now, Brett. It wasn't too bad before. Half an hour. 
Now when you're getting dressed up, it's serious. Adam and his mates are slowly suiting up. The lads are cutting it fine. Page boy Craig knows what's expected. Well, these things got 20 buttons. Oh, look at them. There's buttons on the inside, on the outside, zips. You reckon Adam's pretty, you know, he'd be alright for it? Oh, yeah, huh? yeah, I think so. Yeah? Might scrub up alright. Pretty happy. While Rachel's family discusses his suitability. <laughs> shouldn't complain. <laughs> Mum's yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, he's good. She's happy with him, so it's the main thing, isn't it, that she's happy. Yeah, he's nice. Hard worker. Yeah, I'm going to miss him as she's sort of married, changing the name to Marshall instead of Brian. You know? Oh, she doesn't have such big boobs. Oh, yeah. Oh, massive. I'm thinking about now, Rachel. Adam's anxiety is growing. Oh, I am thinking about Rachel and when she walks down, down the aisle and stuff. I mean, it's a pretty special day for both of us. Just our families and our friends to be there. So, just thinking of everyone that we care about. Adam's having some pre-wedding jitters. I wasn't even worried about it. I wasn't even worried about it until... 44. Yeah, yeah. You still want to be running around your boxes, don't you? <laughs> A couple of quick beers to calm the nerves can't hurt. Let's hope he handles match day with more composure. Grab Rachel's hand. Stand. Way to stand. When you grab her hands, let them go. And there's Marcy. Good to see Marcy here tonight. Now, Marshy, I hope you're not going to be that nervous come Saturday, mate. No, I, um, that was the uh, most nervous I've ever been in my life, mate. And the wife looks fantastic. As always. Very As good. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about that audience? She looks great. We'll get back to the wedding later on in the show. For now, though, who will coach the Hammerheads? That's the big question tonight. Audience, you got a view as we go to the graphic? <laughs> Two is the number to call. And don't forget, hammerheads.com.au. Is it going to be David Reese jones option one, Jenny Ball, option two, or Daniel Southern down the bottom? That's going to be yeah. the burning issue tonight. Well, whoever gets the nod will have a big job on their hands because the players from this club come from all walks of life. As well as looking after the physical side, our coaches are also responsible for the looking after players, some of whom are a long way from home. Last week, Aaron Sweet moved into his new Melbourne home with the other interstaters. All locked up, hopefully. These guys don't lock up, they leave windows wide open. He also met up with his wife and kids to try and rekindle their broken relationship. Nathan. Just for Yeah. Hey, Jess. Today, he's taking his eldest daughter, Jessica, to school for reading time in an attempt to make up for lost time. Uh, uh, come here, come here. I spoke to him the other night on the phone and asked him what he wanted to do. I mean, he said he didn't, he wanted to work it out and that, and, you know, I just said to him, well, you've got to be around to make relationships work, you know. To try to keep her satisfied and pleased is very, very difficult. I feel uh, from where I sit or from where I am, I'm um, fulfilling uh, all those expectations that can be expected of someone in, in my position, if not more. Um, as far as coming and spending time with the kids. It's either one way or the other. We either work it out or we don't work it out. And for me, I'm at the point where I'll go either way. Hopefully there's maybe some sort of hope or something at the end of the day that um, might bring us back together, but maybe it's just a inevitable that's going to happen at the end of the day. Um, that we might end up getting divorced. And there's Aaron. Good luck to Aaron as he seeks to, and Wendy as well. Good luck to both of them as they seek to sort out their situation there. And good luck to Aaron on Saturday as well, having just been picked at centre half back. We'll follow their progress in the coming weeks. While we're working our way through the inaugural Hammerhead lineup, we're up to the centre line at the moment. And sadly, for one popular team member, the news isn't good. Okay, let's move on to the centre line now, guys. Well, Joko has to be centre. There's no doubt about that. Mm, why is that? Well, because he's, that's his, that's his position. <laughs> no, that's uh, no, he's no, a good player. No, he's, he's that's good player. That's, that's yeah. his position. He's a good player. Good player. Uh, on, on the wings? On the wing, Quanny. <gasps> what about Deb? Hang on, Debbie. The situation is the League have sent us a letter. They've got a list of demands or a list of information they require from us. Yes. And at this point, we are gathering the information for presentation for their decision. And where does that leave Jamie then? We have to prove strength, power and physique competing against men. 
Don't tell me Jamie's got any of those. No, I, I mean, unfortunately, that, that really does sort of rule her out pretty well straight well, away. Well, we need to tell her now. We can't leave her hanging on, playing bits and pieces yeah. around the place. It's been quite clear from the criteria being set by the league, it's just not fair to you to be to playing with the men. And you know it's nothing to do with your ability, because there, there's no doubt that you, you match that with most of those guys. But it, it is just, I mean, you're little, you're you a do. little girl. Congratulations to Jamie. There she is. Hard times to Jamie. But you'll be still seeing a lot of Jamie around the club throughout the coming weeks. That's just one of the many tough decisions that will have to be made during the year. Coming up on the club, we tackle the tough issue of whether Debbie Lee can play for the Hammerheads. Remember, we're down to one woman in the squad at the moment. And we name the rest of the team and the man or the woman who will be the coach. They've spent 24 hours figuring out how to play each other for 50 grand. But how do you separate the winner from the pack? I'm guessing you're pretty confident. I'm out there. There's the underdog, the hot dog, and the mad dog. Things are falling out of my mind. I can see them go. But this Saturday... Revenge. How does that sound? Sweet baby. It's sweet. Only one can be top dog. Every dog has its day. The brand new Aussie fun of Dog Eat Dog. Saturday, 6.30 on 7. <laughs> We're experiencing one of our driest periods on record. But now it's autumn. The days are getting shorter and the nights are getting cooler. This means the evaporation rate is decreasing and your garden is using less water. So please, adjust your reticulation timer to water for only 10 minutes per station. The water we save over the next few months will help determine the level of restrictions needed next summer. Save water. It's up to all of us. It's the New Mart percentage off price blitz. 250 grams sunshine cream biscuits. 67 cents. Skin on chicken breast fillets. $8.77 a kilo. New Mart. Extra value for you. <laughs> and me. Here's a tip top tip for an afternoon snack a cheese and tomato muffin melt. Mmm, the kids will just love them. Tip -top, tip -top. life, we all have potential to be successful. Sometimes though, we are sidetracked by the issues and pressures we face each day. It's our job to focus on our goal and work towards it. You may not know where the ball is going to go when it leaves your hand, but if you've had good coaching and you put in the effort, you're giving it your best shot. Cash in now on our Coles Super Late Week Special. Check out Loose Gala Apples, great value at only $1.29 a kilo, but only available from today until Sunday. So be quick. Harvey Norman's huge Harvey Norman sale has been extended by popular demand this Thursday, Friday and Saturday only. This huge savings on electrical computers, Manchester furniture and bedding. Harvey Norman's Harvey Normal sale, three big days only. Offer ends this weekend. A few weeks ago, we met Corny's baby daughter, Alana, who since birth has needed a permanent brace to correct a hip problem. I think it's time to graduate this young lady from a harness. Oh, good. Off it comes. The big day has arrived for Daryl Corn and his family. Baby Alana's brace comes off today for the last yeah. time. No more harness. Hey, yeah. Yeah, babe, look. It's never going to go back on again. Hello, eh? baby. Hey, she's free. Yeah. It's all off. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's finally got her harness off, so we're pretty excited about that. So we thought maybe we might go and get some um, family photos done with her new legs, because <laughs> I'm all excited. The Cuba looks good. Cowboy. Right. Huh? He thinks it looks good in everything and anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl! Yeah, she'll be able to catch up to the to the other babies around there, you know. So I think she'll pick up crawling and walking pretty easy, I hope. And I'm, I'm keen to teach her. Just hope that they don't they never have to do anything to them again. And and that they're they're alright. Cheeky! Ah, la 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 la! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Alana. 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 Hello, Al
Which is wild, here they are. Can you believe I've run out of film? Isn't that typical? <laughs> Daryl has another appointment today at the Hammerhead's local pub. Richo's asked him to drop in for a chat about the problems he's been having fitting into the team environment. You know, and I know that there's probably a few people that you upset in the team. Connie's just Aunt Jamie. He knows she's a girl. She's the only one who can bloody tackle, a little fairy. Yeah, everyone knows you're keen as master, but it's just rubbing people up the wrong way. He should be behind me, either shepherding me or in front of me. But he was there and he was calling the shots and you took it the wrong way. Just control what you say to some people sometimes, you know. Just think, oh well, I'll let this lie. I'll let this just go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's hard to swallow me pride, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm like that, you know? Definitely, I'm the same. I don't like getting told what to do. But um, sometimes you just got to... just Green take, take, Yep, that's it. Mm. Cop the blows sometimes. And it comes down to respect, and the first thing to win the respect from the boys is, is just going in hard for the footy and letting the respect show on the ground. But the best thing about the footy, and that's the reason we play it, is, is it, it breaks down the barriers. It does, mate, it does. So... Oh, eventually I can see us coming together a little bit more and people, you know... Yeah. I don't know, just taking me as I am. Yep. But I know I have to change a little bit. Everyone has to change a little bit. Definitely, you know? yeah. Work, Quaddy! Let's go, boys! Bamahead's yeah. full back, Richo there. Giving one of his younger teammates the benefit of his many years of experience. Richo and Quani are with us, and also from the interstaters, Swanee and Jaco, and one of our candidates, David Reese jones Welcome. Uh, happy. Richo, you took it upon yourself to take the young fella under your wing. Yeah, I did. Now, geez, um, I don't know, you can't judge a book by its cover, and I think a lot of us did that at the start of the, of the year. And, um, yeah, he's like a little Jack Russell, and I just thought I'd teach him... Um, Teach just him how to handle things a bit differently. You're teach him the laid-back approach, aren't Yeah, you? that's it, you know. <laughs> um, you know, he's good, and he listened to what I said, which was good. And, um, you know, hopefully it works out. You're taking it on board? Yeah, yeah, I've got a bit of respect for Richo. He's one of the older blokes, and he's shown me, you know, a bit of a appreciation so far. So, yeah, I've taken a lot of on board that Richo said so far, yeah. Can't help but feeling you're starting to get a little bit more acceptance among the boys. Swanee and JK, you're running the show down there, among the boys. Yeah, he's, he's nah. Been, he's having a crack, though. He's Definitely. The footage that you just saw, he's hard at the ball, and that's good for the team. Exactly. Lifts everyone up a bit. He's really, he's really started. He's pulled his head in a bit, and everyone's starting to come around, and he's yeah. doing really well at the moment, which is good. Now, you two boys are from Perth. Is it time I got someone to take you under your wing? I hear it's been a big week in the house. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, had, it's definitely had a few moments this week. Um, it's been great, though. I mean, really... A what do you mean by a few moments? Uh, just a normal, 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 normal day in the week. All right. Well, <laughs> okay, well, you be the judge. Let's have a look at the, how the house has been progressing. Is this a normal day in the week? Last week, the interstaters moved in together, and already there's a bit of friction in the house. Now, the camera doesn't mind. You've got a crack on the, on the top of the board. You've got the sink. Water left in the sink with a crack all in the sink. Absolutely disgusting. You've got last night's tea or whatever left there, which I haven't cleaned up after myself. I need some money, honey. Jaco and Swanee couldn't care less about the state of the house. They're out trying to rustle up sponsorship dollars. Hi. How you going? Uh, my name's Swanee and this is Andrew and uh, we're from the local footy team, Kensington Hills. Like, do you want like player sponsorship or do you want club sponsorship? Or? Yeah, no, uh, I'd, it'd be great if you'd sponsor just me. Just me. It's a thousand dollars. No way. That's what um, Nathan Brown gets at the Western Bulldogs. If you give us a shot, like halfway through the season, you can just pay. I tell you what, if I give you five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. And we. And at the end of the year, you get into the grand final. I'll give you another five hundred. Well, yeah, I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, done deal. The boys know how to turn on the charm for the ladies. By night, the Hammerheads have been taking advantage of their newfound fame to win over the women. The sign on the door says it all. But the morning after, Jaco's friend gets camera shy. And Jaco's not having any luck with Jamie, the other woman in the house. I put it on my bed. Take the cover off. When I got home, I was so angry. I walked in, 
I walked into my room and there was no quilt on the bed and I immediately was like, Jayco. <laughs> For anyone to go into someone's room when they're not there and just use something of theirs is like, that's pretty full on, especially for chicks. I personally value my privacy pretty dearly, especially because I'm away from home and in like a totally new environment. Why are you so worried, man? If you're gonna bring chicks home, it's gonna get filmed. You know what's gonna happen. Okay. Okay, there's Jamie looking nervous. You can see Jamie there in the front row. There's five of you in the house, we should remind people, from South Australia and Western Australia. You're from WA. Uh -huh. You've upset Jamie there. Yeah, very much so. Did you do the wrong thing? Yeah, I did. I uh, borrowed a doona. It was a bit chilly that night, so I thought I'd <laughs> go into her room. She wasn't sleeping in her room, so I borrowed a doona. And the word is he's doing that well. He's put a revolving door on his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, there's, now, there's issues uh, in the house, Swanee, isn't there? I'll tell you the truth, mate. In Jaco's def defence, I mean, I'd, I'd wear sort of brought up in families of boys and so sharing things is pretty common I mean bloody I, I didn't think a doona was that big a deal either but um, obviously we were wrong and I mean, would have been if girls, it was yours. <laughs> what I wouldn't have minded. What about the cleanliness factor you boys are the ones that are being blamed at the moment for that mess that Aaron just showed. Yeah well we just had a probably a large night out socialising I don't know if Aaron joined us uh, I, probably not but yeah we, we like to definitely like to have a good time. All right. Um, yeah things get I mean, messy for a day or something, but I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, it's okay. a house. Well, yeah. let's hope the coaching situation doesn't get messy tonight. What you're about to see may help you decide who you would like to coach the Hammerheads. Each of our candidates has been in charge of one of the practice matches. And first up was David Rhys Jones. Yeah! As he prepares the Hammerheads for their first practice match, David Rhys Jones's coaching philosophy begins to emerge. I worked in a back pocket, Baz, just to start with. I'll give you a run. And David's inclusive style is appreciated by his players. Footy's a great game, fellas. Get out there and enjoy it. All right, looking after each other. Get plenty of shepherds, smothers. Kick it, kick it! The players respect David's experience, and they respond to him. Throwing it! Go hard, Jaco! At half time, David's not satisfied. When we got the ball, you attack. You run, you take a risk, you do things. When they've got the ball, you defend. David's getting to know his players fairly well and makes some changes to get more out of them. Go to full back, go to full back. This, this side, this, this side. side. Yep. David's moves are starting to work. Half forward. Sean Collins goals moments after David put him at half forward. There's a good tactical mind at work here, but David's a hard man to please. Let's start thinking like winners, acting like winners. We had blokes turn up late today. Everything we're doing from now on, let's just be professional about the way we go about it. These blokes are pretty forgiving. And good luck to Reese tonight and his quest to be the coach. Reese, a lot of speculation about your ban last year in the Heidelberg or the Diamond Valley League. What's the situation as you understand it? Well, I was rubbed out for uh, the remainder of last year and all of this year, which, um, yeah, I'm looking at avenues to try and upend that. OK, well, we've got some news through today that the two leagues have got together and we can tell you that you will, if you get the job, be allowed to coach for the season so long as you don't go past the boundary line. So that's good news for you, Reece. I'm sure I'll get on the field at some stage, so I'll, I'll keep working on it. OK, well, exactly who will coach the Hammerheads is yet to be seen, but we do know who will be lining up across the half-forward line. Yeah, we've got a problem with centre half-forward, guys. Um, yeah. Well, Ian Aiken. Aiken's out, isn't he? Yeah, for how long, we don't know, mm. so he's, well, uh, he's a long-term again. Chappie did really well in the seconds last week at Upper Torquay. Chappie's been good in all yeah. the practice matches, so... He's mobile, he's fit, he gets good touch. He'll, 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 he'll be all right there. Happy with that? Yep. Yep. A half forward line there, Reese. I believe you didn't have a problem filling centre half forward until last weekend. Yeah, that's right. Uh, me and Aiken going down, hurt us, and, and Barclay Dixon to our ruckman last week, um, twisted an ankle. So, uh, you know, we, we've had some injury problems, but Chappie's been good in the seconds and played a few games in the seniors, and it looks like he'll be all right. All right, he's the big one, Ian Aitken, a former rookie of the year in the VFL AFL, an old teammate of David Reese Jones, before tragedy hit on the weekend. Back when ex-Carlton player Ian Aitken was picked for the club, 
everything was looking rosy and he was keen to get back on the track. Fifteen years ago we played in a premiership together. Ian Aitken. What are you doing here? I'm trying to resurrect my career at the tender age of 34 to show, the, show that I've still got something in me. I'm sure you have. Ian Beezer Aitken has still got something in him and it's starting to shine through in the practice matches. But just before the Hammerheads first game, tragedy strikes. Oh, I saw you go up. Full, full force oh, on the yeah. And I just heard it go crack. It's not like a little one. Yeah. It's a pain. Oh. Oh. Beza breaks his wrist and ends yeah, his day nice. in hospital. And, uh, have to have an operation on it. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to come back from this, I think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, it could be 10 weeks, could be 6 weeks, could be 3 months, who knows. And there he is, Ian Beezer Aitken. Ian, thanks for joining us tonight. Only five days after the injury, it's taken a bit of courage to come in tonight. Our hearts go out to you. How long are you going to be out for? Uh, probably three months, I think. Um, pretty disappointing. I was really starting to enjoy it and get a bond with some of the teammates, which was great. So it could be the season, but you're hopeful of getting back before the end. Certainly your teammates will be spurring you on. Hopefully uh, they make the finals and uh, give me that opportunity. Point of them here tonight. Spur him on. There we go. Good luck to Ian Aitken. And we'll follow his progress in the coming weeks. He'll be trying desperately to get back before the end of the season. Only two days to go before match one in round one. We nearly have a team. The coach is yet to be decided, but Greg Miller, our football manager, still has plenty of work to do to get the Hammerheads on the field. It's exciting. It's exciting, the, the birth of a new team. And to see how we'll go in the competition. The practice match form has been pretty good. But uh, when the real stuff starts, we've got to be, be prepared. We need the scoreboard. We've got about 10 days to build it. It's going to cost 13 grand. We're not going to do it. Greg Miller. Uh, good morning, it's Greg Miller. I'm Greg Miller here again, mate. They're only 13 bucks, you better give me three of them. Highly illegal. This is where we're making our guernsey. Make it five as heavy. I just got worried about um, when you sew it up. It allows me to play Debbie Lee. Thanks, mate. Hazy, Greg Miller. We missed your training on uh, Tuesday night. Johnny Hayes, don't worry. I need a freezer. Should that be perfect? How much is that? I need some tables and chairs. Yeah, yeah. And I need some sort of industrial oven. Something like that. Big Miller. Don't you like it? Yes, sir. Get off that phone when you're driving. If you were falling for someone... I'd really love you to come. Would you pack up your life? If I left, it'd be like starting over again. For the chance of love? Well, like a heap. And something like that comes along once in a blue moon, love. Will he follow his heart tomorrow? Subway has a new bread made with that bee guy's honey and his oats. Oh, whoa. That can't be good. There's one right there. Hey, where you going? Subway's this way. Hi, guys. Hey, Kelly. Mr. Honey and Mr. Oat. Subway's new honey oat on wheat bread is delicious. We start with tasty wheat bread, coat it with honey, sprinkle it with oats, and bake it all together. It's one of Subway's two new gourmet breads. They make great bread together. We just got to become better friends with the bees. Subway is fresh. Our big fellas there trying to lose a few kilos. Let's see how they take shape. Mm. The moment of truth has arrived for the club's big eaters. All right, boys, it's been a couple of weeks. It's time to weigh in. Chubb, you're up first. I'll go first. Let's look on first. 131. Chubba Chubba. Exactly the same. 115. So, 117, two kilos down. Good Good well on. done. Alright, that has you right on 
90 kilograms, which is exactly what you were two weeks ago. So I'm exaggerating. Well, no, it's not all right. You're meant to be losing weight, not maintaining it. Hey, I'm always in the fridge, mate. That's why they call me the fridge. You are at 119. So you've maintained your weight as well if you yeah. haven't lost any. Guys, some of you really have to work a lot harder at actually getting your weight down. The biggest issue is this. Okay, you got to you got to watch what's going in here, and uh, your gold standard is uh, standing there in the Essendon jumper, and uh, you know he shows that if you if you put some effort into it, you can make a big difference. There they are from the left: Chubb, Barbs, The Rock, Fridge, and one of our coaching candidates, Daniel Southern. Welcome, everyone. You're the only one to have lost any weight, mate. You've lost two kilograms. You excited? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> what about you, Fridge? You haven't lost any weight at all, mate. I got a hip problem, but yeah. Um, I've seen the doctor. I've got a problem with the right hip. I like sleeping on one side all night. I like sleeping, period, no? Um, <laughs> I've got a problem with my uh, left hand. I've got carpal tunnel syndrome. So if I sleep on my uh, left side. My whole side of the body falls asleep. So. That's what you go to sleep for, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right, yeah. You want to go to sleep? Oh, I love sleeping, mate. Give me a mattress, I'll sleep. What and about you, Chubb? You uh, haven't lost any weight at all. You're over 130 kilograms. <laughs> Are you drinking too much? Is that the problem? No, nah, I've given up drinking, mate. Well, what's the problem? Um, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> what about you, Barbs? You you know, I think you've lost a couple of kilograms since Yeah, then. I was pretty disappointed when we last weighed in, so I really made an effort in the last couple of weeks and uh, weighed in with Dr. Con and I've lost four kilos, so it's gone a lot. Well done, the Barbs. Well, we've still got heaps coming up on the club, including, of course, the football wedding of the year, when our very own Marshy and Rachel will tie the knot. More on that shortly, but before that, let's find out who'll be beating the goals for the Hammers this weekend. OK, we'll move on and do the full forward line. First of all, let's get the forward pocket. Who's going to be the second rover for us? What about Hazy, Johnny Hayes? Probably got the skills. Flies a little bit too much. Should yeah, be down at the front a, and centre. Bit of a treat too. Yeah, it should be getting to the front of the backs. Yeah, but he's not bad at kicking goals. We need yeah. a little goal sneak. Yeah, I'm happy. Get, get full forward. Got to improve a bit. Bucky, well, Bucky, look, Bucky, Bucky picks himself. You know, he yeah. picks himself. He's been <laughs> fantastic all the way through. On the other pocket, we've got a problem with, uh, with Chubb. His injury... Uh, He's going to keep me out for two or three more weeks now. OK, we'll mm -hmm. better get rid of him. He's out. He's bored there. Mm -hmm. um, who's going to take his place? What about, what the, about, fridge? What about the fridge? What's happening, Fridge? Yeah. Trubber's out. Trubber's out. We need someone to play in the forward pocket. We'd like you to fill it. Can you do it? I've got a problem with my uh, right thigh. I've got a sore hip pain. I've been having physio for it, swimming every night when I'm not training. Are you going to put your hand out for the hammerheads? I am. I'm going to. <laughs> I have a nice little tiny bend. The fridge in the forward pocket. Fridge is going to be. A <laughs> Sorry, excuse, I'm not meaning to laugh at you. No, Am I right. laughing with yeah. you? No, it's it's right. going to be a big stage for you on Saturday, mate. It's one of the biggest days of your life. 36 years of age, and you've got a gig in the forward pocket for the Hammerheads. Yes. How are you going to go? I'm going to put on the greatest spectacle the Western region has ever seen, mate. <laughs> I'm going to be voting to Hall of Fame. <laughs> Chub, 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 you won't be there. You're the reason Fridge has got a game in the forward pocket. That dodgy ham... I can't imagine possibly you've got a hamstring. Yeah, no, mate, no, they might. No, I tore off on this rip roar and lead, hit the sound barrier and blew a hammy. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it. Daniel, you've got the job, of, if you get the job on Saturday, of getting these boys into shape. Yeah, I reckon Fridge will do it right down there. He's put big wraps on himself. Uh, you were on a good lead there, Chubb. It yeah. was explosive, wasn't I it? Know. That bang that Quick. we heard when it went. It's a shame because he would have been really good for us up well, there, Chubb. Well, Daniel was in charge that day. Everyone got a go at coaching one of the practice matches, the unofficial practice matches. Let's have a look at Daniel Southern in action. Daniel Southern's coaching assignment is a tough one. The Hammerheads take on Braybrook's first 18, one of the toughest sides in the WRFL's first division. And with several of his star players arriving late, he's not happy. Just for you three that just rocked up then, um, Swanee, Jake, and Macca, pretty ordinary boys. Um, we're going to have to start all you boys on the pine. Sorry, fellas. Discipline dealt out. Daniel's back to the task at hand. I've got faith in your ability. I think you can take this mob on. 
And you've got to believe in yourselves as well. It's going to be working. Daniel goes one-on-one on one with the boys to go to through the game him. plan before a pre-match rev up. We're going to be a team. There's only one way to create that mateship is go out to battle. Boys, you seem to go on the wall. Come on, lead him out, Pisa. Fire up, boys. Daniel was impressed by his players, but less enthusiastic about the umpire. Don't worry, Richo, it's all right. There's nothing in that. Terrible decision, mate. Don't worry. I don't know to give the umpires a spray in this league or what. The players also cop Daniel's rap if they don't follow the game plan. Get weapon off. At half time, the side's within striking distance. Everyone was a lot more committed to the footy. Quanny really led the way. Where are you, Quanny? Right, terrific, mate. The way he went back with the fly of the footy there was terrific, mate. This quarter, I just want to slow them down. We come in three or four down at three quarter time. We're going to overrun them. Back on the field, the boys played tough, uncompromising footy. And the Hammerheads took the game up to its more fancied opposition, with the crowd willing Daniel to a win. Danny, you get the job now, Danny. We get up. We got time. Daryl Kwan was doing the job for Daniel on field. Work, Let's go, boys. <laughs> the umpire is also getting the spray Brad, Daniel promised Brad. earlier. Umpire, there's a free kick there. <laughs> oh, well. Good work, boys. Can't speak highly enough of the boys. They really had a red hot go, and in the end, they had to try and take our heads off. They were that concerned about us. The footy world's pretty small, and there was a lot of people out here watching us today. And uh, the word's going to spread that the Hammerheads are going to be a force to be reckoned with. They could well be under that man, Daniel Southern. Another possible coach. Good luck to Daniel. If you get the gig tonight, votes are closing soon. Wish Daniel luck, everyone. After the break on the club, the women in football issue, behind the fence or on the field? A question our own Debbie Lee wants answered. That's next. Guys, thanks for coming along. What Perth wants is the inside story. I'm going to show you the secret weapon that will help us deliver Perth's football exclusives. It's inside information on the AFL. Our viewers will go inside the game, the players, the match strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Wusha. Watch our exclusive reports from the men on the ground every night on 7 News. Inside AFL, only on 7 News. Looking for something? How about mainland butter soft? Rural butter that spreads cold. Thanks. What about Colby natural cheese slices? They'll help you grow up big and strong. <laughs> I was thinking tacos. Ah, delicious mainland tasty. Grated. Thanks. Weird. Mainland. Your friend in the fridge. Action kicks your food bill down. This week, Berry Cordial, only $1.99. Cotty's Options Ice Cream, just $1.99. And one kilo spree laundry powder, also $1.99. Back for the good taste. Action! If it's expert advice, all the right price, we've got it. To keep it clean or watch the big screen, we've got it. If your wife is down, the all around. Brigade, uh, start with their ruckman. Well, Dicko going down. Barry Noble's been good for us. He's, uh, he's led by example. Yeah, been, he's um, definitely got to be. Been there. good, you know, and um, probably the second choice have to be, as a, as a rover, it'd have to be Macca. You know, we've got to bring him up. Yeah. You know. He's been in good form in the seconds, hasn't he, so yeah, far? That's a great player. He deserves a chance. I think mean, it's yeah. great to give him a yeah. chance. It'd be good, good for all the other guys in the seconds who wait an opportunity to see him come up. Yeah. Okay, the first ruck. Don't really have much choice, do we? What about Big Wade? He seems to have worked on his fitness over yeah, the last few weeks. To be able to run for, for nearly a full game is going to be very difficult, mm -hmm. Jen. I mean, we're, um, we're pretty light on for tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's going to be our, our starting 18. There they are. 
The Rucks and Rovers for this weekend's opening round against North Sunshine down there at Holland Park in Kensington. Get a long entry is free if you're in Melbourne, or you can follow the progress on 7 News and Triple M of the Hammerheads over the coming days. Our third and final coaching candidate, though, is Jenny Ball. She, yeah. Yeah. She played a major part, of course, in whipping the Hammerheads into shape. She had a go at coaching in one of the practice matches as well. Let's take a look at how she went. Today, the Hammerheads take on rival WRFL second division side, Glen Orden. And Jenny's a bundle of nerves. Her tactics are simple. Pressure all time, so that you're really going to pressure, pressure them to, to stuff up and fumble. And then we want numbers on the ball, helping each other out. She desperately wants the win. Her attention to detail is impeccable. Has the coin been tossed yet? No. no. As is her personal grooming. I'll put my umbrella up. Of course you are. Bad hair. Good idea. But she's all business on the boundary. He just didn't. He got a little tap and he straight away reacted, you know. She asks the fridge for a big effort. I'm going to leave boon marks in the grass. <laughs> That's five kicks, Tone. Have an aim. Aim to get five kicks. You're on your half forward. Baz! Baz! Bazza gets into a scrap. And gets sent off. Lucky, lucky, very lucky. Lucky, Baz. Shit. <laughs> You've just got to play, you know, above that. You play above it. You know? too wise. He's trying to take one out. It's because you're winning. That's why you're beating him. So he's, he's rattled. A group hug to celebrate the win. <laughs> the team has the final say. Jenny Ball, and good luck to Jenny. Not happy, not happy with those bits you showed. Okay, well, that's, that's coaching. Now I had it seems... really good strategic plans there that just weren't shown. I'm not happy about no, that. We saw that, we saw that. Now, we heard from Jenny, it seems an appropriate time to discuss the role of women in football. Joining Jenny on the panel are Debbie Lee, who hopes to break new ground by mixing it with the men for the Hammerheads. And flanking Debbie is Ian Ham, the president of the Western Region Football League. And the president of the Hammerheads, Sam Kikovich. Please welcome him to our cafe. All right, well, let's get down to Tin Tax. This is where we're going to get right into the subject of women in football. We had planned to put Debbie Lee through a fitness test against six other players from the competition tonight, and that was the first phase in her proving that she would, if or would not, be good enough to play in the Western Region Football League. Debbie, though, there's been a setback for you. That's right, Hutchie. Unfortunately, on, um, on the reserves match I played against Braybrook, I actually did an ankle in the uh, dying stages of the fourth quarter. OK, how are you feeling? First of all, obviously you wouldn't be able to play this weekend no, regardless. that's right. Um, it's a little bit sore. I can put a bit of weight on it, but as far as going, you know, side to side, that's where my problem is. So I just want to keep off it until I'm uh, ready to go against these guys. Well, the practice matches are over now, so your fate rests in the hands of people above you, including this man, Ian Ham, the president of the Western Region. Welcome, Ian. Thanks, Craig. Take us through the situation as it sits with Debbie Lee. Can, is she eligible to play at this point? OK, at this stage, no. Uh, under our rules, we have no capacity to issue a uh, playing permit or register a female player over the age of 12. OK, what's the... All right, hang on. What's the process from here on for Debbie Lee if she's to play in the competition? The process from here wouldn't be just about Debbie. It would be looking at the rules of football, uh, and it would involve every league around Victoria and Football Victoria looking at the, uh, the rule as it stands, and we require a review, review process that would be very extensive. So you've got a fitness test in there, you've got... At this, stage, at this stage, Craig, it hasn't even been determined what the criteria would be if there was one. We need to look at all the issues surrounding football, surrounding those who play it now, uh, surrounding those who would want to play it, what that would be both on and off the field for Australian rules right. football. We'll get back to that in a moment. I know you're speaking to people higher up, including Football Victoria. It's an issue that's divided the community at the moment, even in the Herald Sun vote line this week. They pose the question, should Debbie Lee play? And there's the result of the Herald Sun vote line. That's a big number of calls in the Herald Sun this week. 465 said yes, she should play. And 467 said no. So 49% felt Debbie Lee was good enough. 51% felt that she shouldn't play or wasn't able to play at this point. Sam, your view. You're the president of the Hammerheads. You're the one that's got to hold the baton at this point. Well, Craig, we have a moral obligation at the Hammerheads to ensure that we explore every conceivable avenue 
to enable Debbie Lee to realise her dreams. First and foremost. Secondly, secondly, we're not stupid. We recognise that we're in uncharted waters and that uh, these issues transcend the parameters of the Western Region Football League. This is of a national consequence. This could be a watershed case. And we want to make sure that it's critical we get it right. Now, women in sport, they've transcended every conceivable barrier in, in our society. Why would all of a sudden, Ian, it preclude them being available to play football? When the Jewish... When you've got to understand the Israeli army, 74% of them are women, and the, the other 26% are members of the Mossad, which is their secret service. So there's no doubt that women are more than capable, given the fact that they meet the criteria. I don't think you're on... Can I say too, I mean, it's probably not all women, because De Debbie is an exception. And I mean, I'm just, I've just been supporting Debbie, not just women in general because they're women, but Debbie because she's got the skills, she knows what she's up against, and she wants to have a go. And, you know, I, I don't think it's going to open the floodgates as such, because I don't think most women would actually want to play against blokes. But, but Debbie actually does. Now, in fairness... Well, we'll hear from Ian again in a moment. Debbie Lee, you're the, the argument here. There was arguments kept going crossfire across the table while you sit there and listen, not knowing if you're going to play. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling at this point? Well, it's a, it's a bit overwhelming at the moment. Um, the idea of coming to the club was just because the simple fact of all the other 29 people that are playing for the Hammerheads, and that is because I love football. Um, I've played at the highest level for women's football and the opportunity to present itself. Do you so, feel good enough and physically strong enough to play? Well, you look at guys like Quinny and you look at guys like uh, the Fridge and, uh, you know, they may be a little bit stronger, but I think I can get past the Fridge on the wing. <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully, you know, it, it's about, um, yeah, I think I do have the ability, Hutchie, but, um, you know, I think it comes down to a gender thing. And, Ian, quickly, you're not against women playing. Women in football is the theme of the Western Region this yeah, year, Yeah, women it? in football, that's the theme of our, uh, of our league this year. No, not just washing the dirty clothes. No, and, no. And, uh, working in the not at, no. not at all. One of the great foundation pillars of our, of our Western Region Football league, league is the active role that women have played in it, Jenny. So can you tell me how you've adopted what those buffoons in Parliament said that at 12 years of age, that's the cut-off line, that's when they're regarded as being capable or ineligible of playing football? That what? those buffoons felt that the female anatomy at 12 years of age is such that it would preclude them actually taking the field. Why we adopted that, and as being part of Football Victoria, we are bound by their rules. Uh, those rules are basically do recognise, I suppose, the laws of nature. People do, male and females, do start to differ greatly at about the age of 12. At this stage, and given our game is a physically not robust same. one, we are not going to we are not going to take. Uh, a chance for that until we have fully researched and looked at those issues and it doesn't just involve our league as I said it involves all the leagues uh, around Australia and it involves those who play in it now. Certainly I think uh, Debbie has raised a significant issue um, that our game has to evolve and all right. look to the mm. future. We'll leave it there for the moment and get back to that in a moment because there is a legal precedent here too as well as we've discovered this week that may be applicable, it might not. In 2001 Emily South took the Victorian Lawn Bowls Association to court and won the right to play pennant bowls with the men on a Saturday afternoon in St Kilda. Okay. The lady that represented Emily South is a leading figure, probably one of the most leading figures in anti-discrimination law in this country. Senior Counsel Felicity Hample and she told us this week that she thinks Debbie Lee should hang in there. She can't be excluded from competition on the ground of her sex unless the particular league can demonstrate that there is a relevant difference in strength, stamina and physique between her and the men she'll be playing against that would make the competition unequal. They've got to prove that. She doesn't have to prove the, the opposite. There's clearly a window of hope. Um, she's got rights under state and federal law to challenge a decision to exclude her from competition. All right. Please thank our panellists. Please thank Jenny. Thank Ian, thank Debbie and thank Sam. Thanks for the panel everyone. We'll get more on that next week. <laughs> Debbie Lee may be on the sidelines at the moment, but you can still install Jeremy Ball as coach of the Hammerheads if you want, or of course David Reese jones or Daniel Southern. Get on the line to have your say. Get on the phone and call that number. And as for women in football, opinions are divided as you're about to see. Skill-wise and the way that she plays the game, she, I've got no doubt that she would be able to hold herself out on the ground. If she runs out there, then she's got to expect to be hit like everybody else. And um, 
you know, she could hear us too, so. I wouldn't like to be in a position where I'd cause any sort of damage to her. And you don't see their face, you don't see, you know, what they look like and that, you see the jumper. And if a shepherd has to be put on or a uh, hip and shoulder, well, generally a player doesn't think twice about doing that because that's instinct to them, that's what they train for. Yeah, I mean, if she's picked as the, one of the best 18 out there, then, and she wants to play, then there shouldn't be anything stopping her. The horrors hidden in the things you buy. Got the shock of our lives. Ants, band-aids, pins in nappies, even rocks in pillows. I was horrified. Nasty surprises. What you should do about it, today's night at 6.30. Choosing a new mobile? Let Telstra Shop help you. With our More For You deals, you can get a bonus of $240 off your bill over 24 months when you remain on the $60 member plan. Or use that bonus so you pay $0 up front for the Nokia 3310. Telstra Shop can show you how to choose what's right for you today. When trouble finds you, I'll see you through, I'll see you through, oh yes I will. When trouble finds you, I'll see you through, I'll see you through, oh yes I will, oh yes I will. season is about every game, not just the big ones. Teams play for points, not ratings. You don't break play for reds. You have dedication. You play every game, every team, every week. And that if the game gets played, it gets played here on Foxtel. Subscribe now. Call Foxtel on 131 999. Turn it on, on Cinder.com, we've got it. If you want it hot or you want it shot, we've got it. If it's a mini, just a quick snap, no risk. we've got it. To keep in touch, to say thanks very much. We've got it. The only decision, retro, retro. Two contestants have found a new way to play the weakest link, and it's called love. I've just got a bit of a thing for Arthur. Oh, nice. Come on. Is this a match made in hell? Monday, 7.30 on 7. Welcome back to the club. Welcome back to the club. Our coaches are with us. Coaches, we've seen you pick the starting 18. You're going to pick, you pick the interchange as well. Yeah, we have, Craig. Yeah, it wasn't that difficult because we were um, we, we didn't have many to choose from. We ran out of players. Um, <laughs> so many injuries. So we've come up with Rowdy, The Rock and The Weapon. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Event. Rowdy on the interchange bench. The Weapon and The Rock are all going to be on the pine this week. Yeah. Good luck to the three like, of them. Uh, World Championship Wrestling. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Let's just work our way through the team quickly from top to bottom, from the back line through the forward line. Here we go. Here's the team. Libba, Swanee. And of course, Richo at full back. The half back line is Marcy, who's getting married surely. Collo's on the other half back flank. And the centre half back is Aaron from Adelaide. Good luck to those boys. The centre line, Rossi on the wing. In the middle, on the other wing is Quanny. And in the middle is Jaco. Good luck to you, three of them from Interstate. The half forward line, Collo, one of our other twins. We'll see, pick the twins in the coming weeks. Lucas Muir on the other half forward and Chappie at centre half forward. Good luck to them. The full forward line, the fringe. What about the fringe? Gets a game. Johnny Hayes in the other pocket and Bucky at full forward. Wade Barber's going to have to shoulder the ruck work this week. That's going to be tough. Macca gets his chance from the reserves and Bazza, the ruck rover, completes our side of 18. Well, we've all been wondering what the culls will look like, the jumper. Time now for another defining moment in Hammerhead history. Here they are, the Hammerheads, decked out the new club jumpers, the mighty Hammerheads. Hold on, boys. Good luck to boys on Saturday. Hold on, boys. Good year on. It's going to be a big one for the boys on Saturday. 
Don't forget, it's this Saturday, of course, at Holland Park. It's going to be an absolute beauty. The Hammerheads versus North Sunshine from 2 p.m. at Holland Park, Kensington Road, Kensington. Get yourself down there and have a look. Entry is free. And if you can't make it, you can follow their progress, of course, over the weekend on Triple M and on 7 News. Well, there's still plenty more to come on the club, including the football wedding of the year and our captaincy candidates for the Hammerheads. But first, before we get to them, here's a few words from your opposition this Saturday. Skill-wise and the way that she plays the game, she, I've got no doubt that she would be able to hold herself out on the ground. If she runs out there, then she's got to expect to be hit like everybody else. And, um, you know, she could hit us too, so... I wouldn't like to be in a position where I'd cause any sort of damage to her. And you don't see their face, you don't see, you know, what they look like and that, you see the jumper. And if a shepherd has to be put on or a uh, hip and shoulder, well, generally a player doesn't think twice about doing that because that's in... Is your pet a garbage gut? A real garbage gut? Uh, it's a disaster. Then meet Zamba, the cat that'll do anything for a fee. His first target is last night's leftovers and the garbage bin is next. Can Harry lick this problem? Find out Sunday, 30. Then... Sorry. Not the pop star, James. He was the hot favourite, but then Australia voted otherwise. And for the remaining four... I'm getting kind of nervous now that it's getting close. The knives are out. It's every pop star for themselves, Sunday on 7. You need new tyres? And new wheels? We have no cash. No, no worries. worries. There's no deposit and no interest for 12 months. That's no deposit and no interest for 12 months from Bob. Bob who? <laughs> you like to own a collection of the best rock songs from the greatest years of rock and roll? Now you can with Immortal Rock, an amazing new CD collection from Time Life. Start with the 20 greatest hits from 1968, packed into one classic album for just $14.95. That's an unbelievable saving of $10. To destroy all you've done. On the road again. But that's not all. Use your credit card and we'll send you another CD packed with 20 more rock greats, absolutely free. Then audition other Immortal Rock CDs. There's no minimum to buy. Cancel any time. It's the greatest rock collection of all time, and it's not available in the shops. So call 1-300-300-353 now to get 1968 for only $14.95. Pay by credit card and we'll send you another exclusive CD worth $24.95 containing 20 of the best songs from the history of rock. That's almost $50 value for only $14.95. Call now. If you haven't thought it was time to call VIP, then think about all the great things you could be doing if you didn't have to worry about cleaning the house. Isn't it time you called VIP? For the largest, most complete photographic range, you can't go past Jerry Gibbs Camera House. WA's leaders in frontier state-of-the-art imaging and processing for the digital age. Thinking about a digital video camera? Panasonic and Jerry Gibbs have the answer. The all-new NV DS30 and DS50 cameras have 10 times zoom, LCD screen and progressive Photoshop. Only $13.99 for the DS30 and $15.50 for the DS50. Only Jerry Gibbs does it all. Jerry Gibbs Camera House, Cannington. WA's digital age photo professionals, where you park at the door. I feel like confident about having a win first up for the season, get our season off to a good start and yeah, hopefully get the Hammerheads down their luck a bit. We've been training since late January. Oh, I'd like to think we'd be um, very competitive. Hopefully we can break the, break the ice for Division 2 football. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different, but I think you know after those first five minutes, those jitters get out of the way, it'll just be another game of footy, hopefully, and the boys will play well and uh, quit themselves very well. We've heard feedback that they've got some good players. We're the guinea pigs first round, so... 
I guess we'll find out Saturday. Just keeping it low key, just trying to stick to our game plans over the last few practice games and yeah, take it into the game and hopefully if we do the right things we should come away with a win. And we'll have to do it without those players there. There's the Hammerhead injured players feeling sore and sorry for themselves. We are looking forward to seeing them back on the ground soon and we'll be following their recovery process. Well, of course, every team needs a captain. And as you'd expect on the club, we're giving you the chance to decide who will lead the Hammerheads in season 2002. That, like everything else, will be your call. To narrow down the field, the coaching staff have selected three candidates. Captain candidate number one, Barry Bazaar. I loved being on uh, Young Talent time years ago, but I couldn't really sing. Young Young Day! Captain candidate number two. He's fucking The guys think that the committee think that I'm the man for the job, and I certainly won't um, certainly won't knock it back. Captain candidate number three. Richard Richard O'Neill. Love the food, fight for the match, part of it, you know. The reason I always played the drink after the game and talk about the game and Talk about the specky you did on top of some bloke's shoulder or something. So I suppose that's the reason I play footy. You're in! You're a beauty. Get a beer now. <laughs> there we go. It's your call. Vote for the team captain. You've got the entire week to get on the phone. 1902 555 and dial one for Barry Bazza Noble. Dial two for Bucky, Heath Buck, and dial three for Richo down the bottom, Richard O'Mara. Or we'll get on hammerheads.com.au. Don't forget that website. You've got the entire week to vote for who will be captain. The three of them will be co-captains this Saturday as we build up to the big clash against North Sunshine down there at Holland Park. And they're with us now. Welcome, guys. Put your hands Magic. together for our captaincy candidates. Firstly, down the end. Quanny and Bucky got the tattoos. A good captaincy look, that is. How would you go as Captain Bazza? Sorry, I called you Quanny. Sorry, Bazza. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be captain of the side. It'd be a great honour. And, um, yeah, the boys are pumped for Saturday and bring on North Sunshine. Bucky, you're a leader of sorts in the workplace. How would you feel to lead the Hammerheads, these boys here behind you, out yeah. in the battle? Yeah, great bunch of blokes. I'd be very proud to lead these blokes out. So, yeah, looking forward to this week, mate. All right, your option two. For the support from the boys. And option three is Richo. Captain, mate. Yeah. You have to turn up on time, you realise Well, that. yeah, I think that's the, the key. If I'm captain, I'll be there half hour before training everyone, so... <laughs> Instead of a half hour after, that's like you're at the yeah, moment. Who right. do the players think? Everyone, quick. What do you reckon? Bucky! 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 Audience! OK, next news. We're going out to round one. After the break, we're off to a wedding. And the moment of truth, we'll find out who will coach the mighty Hammerheads. <laughs> The Channel 7 Temptation Island Illusion Party. It's the hottest celebration this side of the tropics, and it happens at the Leadable Hotel every Tuesday night. Come on down and join in the fun. Thanks to Midori and Channel 7. Real TV, we've just closed for the night. It's uh, just after midnight. We're at the uh, biggest ever manufacturer's clearance of intermittent apparel. I mean, ever. I don't know what you're doing in the morning, but I can tell you, ladies, there really is still a lot of stock left over. Have a look around. Do yourself a favour, get in the car early. The guys will be in here from around 9am and I guarantee you will not only be amazed by how much stock is down here, but you will get yourself some superb intimate apparel. The brands you know and you're probably already wearing for what can only be described as stupid prices. Look at this bra, the sticker is still on it. Come and have a look for yourself. It was $54. We did have 20 bucks on them. 40% off now, try $12. From 9am this morning until it's all gone, everything is reduced by a further 40%. No conditions, no exceptions. The Birdswood Dome, opposite the Birdswood Casino. First in, best dressed, literally. Doors open at 9am. I'll see you there. Singing in the rain.
Singing in the Rain, the greatest movie musical of all time, now comes to the stage at Burswood. Be the first to see this magical musical at the special telethon preview on Wednesday the 15th of May, and you'll also help the telethon kids. Singing in the Rain has it all. Great comedy, fabulous sets and costumes, fantastic choreography, and of course, rain. Hurry, book now on box 9484114. Part proceeds to telethon. Every second of every minute, fertilizer slips silently, insidiously, through the dark and the damp and the secret places into the river. There, it feeds algae, which can endanger just about every living thing in it and on it. When you fertilize, fertilize wise. Call for more information. The Channel 7 Temptation Island Illusion Party. It's the hottest celebration this side of the tropics, and it happens at the Leadable Hotel every Tuesday night. Come on down and join in the fun. Thanks to Midori and Channel 7. Up next, a landmark court win for an Aussie smoker. Powell meets for Mideast Peace, scaling down detention centres, and Rose Porteous, not so charitable. All right, building up to round one. And the Hammerheads' first game hasn't been the only topic of conversation around the club in the last month. Well, at least not for Marshy and his fiancée, Rachel, anyway, because in the lead-up to the opening round, that also coincided with their wedding. Rachel arrives in style. Adam's been waiting for this day since he first laid eyes on Rachel. I actually told her the first word, just, there's a time, and you just say, this is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. Rachel was that girl for me. Hi, ah, he's doing 160. It is pumping. Oh, I'm starting to shake now. <laughs> How are you? Rachel's ready, and the big moment's here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here today to join together Rachel Brown and Adam Marshall. Rachel, today I'll marry you, my friend. The one I've laughed with, the one I've cried with. The one I've learned from and shared with. The one I've chosen to support, encourage and give myself to through all the days given us to share. So I offer you this ring as today I marry the one I love. Adam, I love you not only for who you are, but for who I am when I am with you. I love you not only for what you have made yourself, but for what you are making of me. So I offer you this ring as a symbol of my everlasting love for you, as today I marry you, the one I love. I can now pronounce you husband and wife. Adam opens some bubbly to mark the occasion and steals another kiss before the pair head off into the sunset. And there they are. What a great effort for Marcy, Marcy and Rachel, everyone. 
And if I can just ask Rachel while she's still there. Rachel, you seemed a little bit teary watching that back. Is that the first time you've seen that? No, it's not the first time I've seen it, but it does bring a few tears back. And Marsha, you chose your own vows as well. Yeah, it was um, something that we thought was special and it meant a bit to us and um, it all went off well. It was great. All right, put great your hands together, everyone, for Marshy and Rachel again. Well done to them. Good luck to Marshy on Saturday afternoon on the halfback flank. Speaking of nerves, what about our coaches here? Oh. <laughs> what is our nerves? Nervous. It's been seven or eight weeks. You're really, really nervous, aren't you? Yeah, we are. Because we've what had a lot of fun. It's been Archie. really good Happy. fun. So it's just sort of sad there's going to finish for a couple of us. You confident? Not no, really. you can't. <laughs> no, not can't going to say. All right, well, before we announce who, the, who will coach the Hammerheads, let's take a look at what will be happening next week on the club. Next week on the club, the Hammerheads face their first real test in round one. Go hard, Jake, go. You pick the team's captain. Debbie Lee continues her fight to play with the blokes. The house has an international visitor. <laughs> and our Hammerheads judge their teammates' performance on the field for the club. What a moment this is. This is one of the biggest decisions in the club's history, and this, like everyone else, every other decision, has been made by you, the viewer. You've been forming your opinion for weeks on one of the key roles in the club, the coach. The votes have been tallied. I've just been handed them. I can tell you that, Jenny, you are not the coach of the Hammerheads. <laughs> OK? David Rhys-Jones, I can tell you that you are the coach of the Hammerheads. Shots, we'll see you next week. Good luck to the boys in round one. Thank mm -hmm. you.